Welcome to the Let's Talk Badass the Podcast. I'm your host, Katrina Smith, and today we're highlighting National Women's History Month with a special guest. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Angela Bray, and I am the stormwater and arbor manager for the city of Audusta. So how long have you been with the city? For nine years. Awesome. So that's been that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's longer than I've been in any position. So tell me a little bit about your start with the city. Okay. So, yes, I was originally hired as the stormwater manager only, and then two years After that, I was asked to if I would be interested in actually taking over the Arbor Division. Um, Of course, I said yes. Um, You know, it's a new challenge, but I felt like I was best suited for that position. So what qualities help you feel suited for that position? Um, Well, really my background, I've always been interested and had a passion for the environment. And really, you know, they're two completely different divisions. Um, However, they do coincide with one another because in general, trees do tame stormwater. And again, I have that passion. I love all green. That's my favorite color. Um, And it just, it seemed like it was a best, a great fit for me. The transition to being the manager of both of those divisions. Um, at first it was challenging because, you know, you've got to really learn your staff. So you have new staff members, you know, at, at year two, whenever I was asked to take over the Arbor Division, I was, I felt like I was just, you know, getting my foot in the door and understanding stormwater and getting to know the staff and their personalities and, and then to take on a whole nother division and something that are obviously don't have a background in and education. You don't, you know, I didn't go to Arbor school. So I had to learn the ordinances and um, the maintenance and pruning and tree planting and and all the good stuff, you know, that comes along with with the trees um, within the city. So I'm fairly new with the city and I've already worked alongside with Stormwater and Arbor. And I can tell that the employees and your staff really respect you. So how was that earning their respect? What qualities um, about your transition do you think help with gaining that respect for the rest of your staff? Well, I think up front, you know, whenever I, I first started, again, I, I knew what stormwater was and I knew what Arbor was, but um, really, I always said that it takes the person like two to five years to feel comfortable in a position. Um, But coming in, you know, I didn't know the details. I knew enough to get me in trouble. (laughs) Um, However, you know, the details of stormwater and the operation and maintenance side, I had, I really didn't have a clue. So, but I did set the tone up front. I was very transparent. Um, I, they know my expectations. Um, I set high standards and um, really, At the end of the day, I just want to bring out the best qualities in people um, and be an impact not only to, you know, within the staff and employees, but also within the community. And and I think that goes a long ways. Um, You know, we're not numbers, we're people. And um, so I know, you know, about their farm life on the side, their children. um, And I think, you know, having that compassion and empathy really goes a long way and has really worked well and also, you know, coming in not knowing, I really wanted to learn from them. They're the ones who actually taught me. Um, You know, the saying goes, you're only good at, you're only as good as your team. Mm -hmm. And that really speaks volume for me because I wouldn't be where I am without, you know, the success of of my guys and my team. Awesome. So what quality about you that I learned recently is that you're a mother. So what qualities about being in your role as a mother does that help you in your day-to-day life with working with all men yes so um i think the the two things that first come to mind is balance and multitasking um you have a lot that happens within a day um at the city you know just because you have a list of things to do and you think you may have your day scheduled and planned out, it never happens that way. (laughs) So, um, you know, I think we're bouncing all over the place and really as a woman and as a mother, you know, you learn to multitask, you learn to go with the flow um, and you learn to, you know, sometimes you're going to fail, but then the next day you pick yourself up and you you work twice as hard to be successful. Okay. So what does a typical day-to-day in your life look like? Um, Okay, so every day I meet with our 
or my two supervisors first thing in the morning, um, 8 a.m. They're at my office um, waiting for me to to ask them, you know, about the staff. Um, is everybody happy? Everybody accounted for? What are we doing today? What did we do yesterday? What didn't work? What will work better next time? So we're going over work orders and um, really just upcoming projects. So, um, you know, after that, then I set them on their way so they can go meet with their crews. And then also, you know, as a manager, I feel like customer service is top notch priority. Mm -hmm. um, so I am on the phone with citizens, um, whether it's providing an update or to follow up um, with them on, you know, what's happening. We'll be there soon. This is why we're not there. Um, I really feel like that's big and I've gotten great feedback and great response from people saying, wow, thanks for calling or thanks for giving me feedback. So I do talk to a lot of people on a day to day basis, whether it's on the phone or out in the field. Um, also, in the afternoons, I actually go to all the job sites. So I want to see like what my guys are doing. Um, most of the time they're still there working, you know, whether it's pouring concrete, digging ditches. Um, building, you know, stormwater infrastructure, land pipe. So I want to be on site. I feel like it's, um, you know, very important for my face to be seen, not only for the citizens, but for my staff. So I want to be involved as much as I can. Um, although I do have to sit behind a desk a lot and, you know, and, and do the paperwork side, um, you know, but trying to stay organized and making sure that, you know, we're staying on task and we're finishing things like in a timely manner. So I hear that you mentioned a lot about being in the field and showing your face and you were talking about being up front in your initial transition to managing both of the divisions. Do you think that contributed to the respect that you built with the, among your staff? I think so. I, because, you know, again, like I'm up front, I, I have expectations. Um, sometimes they not, may not agree with them, um, but I send them monthly goals. You know, we have numbers to hit, we have things to do. And I feel like I, I hold them accountable. Um, as a manager, it is my job, you know, to bring out the best in them um, and to have them learn as much as possible, whether they stay at the city of Adosta or whether, you know, they go. I want to leave an impact on their life, really, to, to, to do better and to, to meet all their goals and to be successful. You know, money isn't always everything. Knowledge is, it'll get you a long ways. So what's one favorite thing that you like to do with your staff? Um, so, you know, every quarter we usually try to get together, um, to do like a, you know, a lunch, you know, well, um, I feel like it's important to get on that personal level as well with staff. Like I said, I, I know their, their kids names, what they do after work, um, what they do on the weekends. I ask, you know, how their holidays were. Um, and that I think they really appreciate as well. So we do try to get together as often as we can and it not be work, work, work all the time. Um, just to get together and, you know, have lunch and sit down and, and discuss and talk and, and just, you know, be a family. Um, before we leave, we would like to learn a couple stormwater tips because the seasons are changing soon with spring and summer coming up. What are some tips that you could share with our listeners? Um, okay, yeah. So with spring and summer coming, so you have, you have people wanting to spend spend time outside, wash their cars, get out in their yards and their lawn and work. So I think for stormwater, one of the biggest concerns and issues that we have are really, and it's a simple fix, is how people mow their grass. Um, you know, they tend to blow their yard debris out into the street. Well, once it hits the street, then that yard debris is automatically going to get into our system um, when it rains. So which, you know, adds debris and can cause blockages. Um, so we do ask for citizens to, you know, be mindful when mowing their grass and to, and to keep the streets and curb and gutter clear. Also, you know, I like to get out and wash my own car. Um, it's just something that I've always enjoyed to do, especially um, in the spring and summer when it's not too terribly hot. But washing your car on grass instead of pavement because, um, you know, washing your 
car on your driveway or anything like that, the, the water and the soaps can wash into the storm system. And as we all know, everything in the stormwater system goes into, you know, creeks and ponds and which we have aquatic life and things like that. So, um, fertilizer, you know, don't over fertilize, store it properly. Um, I think those are the biggest tips that I could give for the spring and, and summer. Well, I've learned a lot about you and both of the divisions today. So I wanted to just thank you for joining us today on the Let's Talk About Austin podcast. And that's it. Thank you. Glad <laughs> to be here.